following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. The hypostasis of the Bodhisattva and the Bodhicitta within the body of liberation. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shines even unto the west, shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will be the eagles be gathered together. Matthew 24, verse 27, 28. Today we are going to explain about the hypothesis of the heavenly man, which is the Bodhisattva, and the earthly man, which is in Sanskrit or in Buddhism, the Bodhicitta. from the Christian, from the Gospel's point of view. Remember that this uh, series of lectures are related with Christianity and Buddhism. And when we enter into the topic of Christianity, firstly, we have to go into the tree of life, which is Kabbalah, which is a very root of the Gospel's in order to comprehend the four Gospels in the Bible and any Gospel, which are called Apocrypha, which are now very popular. To begin, we have to explain that hypostasis, Gnostically speaking, is the capacity to produce a union of the Soma Sushi Kong, that as you know, Soma is body in Greek, and Sushi Kong means the image soul, or the psychological work that we are performing. The union of that with the Soma Neumaticon. Again, here, Soma is body, Neuma in Greek means spirit. An icon is image. This is precisely what uh, the Bodhisattva, who enters into the direct path, is trying to uh, achieve. The union of the Soma Suchikon with the Soma Neumaticon. This is something that uh, is explained by the Apostle Paul, who between parentheses was and is the master Hilarion. He explains uh, in synthesis in the book of Corinthians, chapter 15, about this uh, mystery, which is of course uh, uh, alchemical and Kabbalistic transformation 
that uh, the initiate has to perform in him or herself. He explains, it is sown a psychic body. This is the Soma Sushikon, according to the, gold, uh, the letters in, written in Greek. He says, it is sown a psychic body. It is raised a spiritual body. The spiritual body is the Neumaticon. There is a psychic body and there is a Neuma body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. And the last, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is a spiritual, but that which is psychic. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly, matter. The second man is the Lord from heaven, spiritual. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly, or Edenic. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly, the Neuma. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Behold here that we says bear. This is something precisely that uh, it is important to inquire now. Because most of uh, Christianity think that we are the earthly man or the first Adam. But this explanation here that the Apostle Paul is stating in Corinthians 15 is directly to the initiates, to the alchemists. As we always explain that the Soma Suchikon has to emerge from us or the body of soul, body soul, which is something that uh, you acquire when you transmute the sexual libido. Because that's precisely what uh, Genesis is all about. Remember that the book of Genesis is uh, the book of generation or the generation of the internal man. Because that is the, all, the, the whole purpose of uh, the book of Genesis. To create the man into the image of God. But uh, in Genesis it's stated that Adam was a living soul. And after that, that Adam became a quickening spirit. And uh, we have to emphasize that the first Adam doesn't exist. Because that's precisely the great mistake of philosophers, religious people that read the Bible literally. They think that the first Adam that the Bible talks about is uh, humanity that populates the whole earth. And is wrong. Because uh, through evolution, as you know, we come here, we are alive physically. But uh, in different lectures, we explain that the Tzalim, the Hebrew Tzalim, which is image of God, abides in the sexual energy. We come from the sexual energy. We are generated by the sexual energy. But the psychological man that the Bible talks about and that the Paul refers in Corinthians is not the physical man that we know. But a psychological entity that has to appear through alchemy and through a psychological work that we explain in, in different lectures through Buddhism and Christianity. As uh, when we investigate the sexual genes or that which in science is called genotype, the an inheritance of our parents or the inheritance that is in the sperm and the ovum, we find there 
that uh, we inherit the psychological characteristics of our parents, even the physical features. But we ignore that within the sperm and ovum also, in the spiritual and psychological inheritance of that that we call God, the monad. So when in Gnosticism we talk about the second birth, or that statement that Jesus of Nazareth says to Nicodemus, that we have to be born again, we don't take that statement as the fundamentalists think, that you will, born, you will be born again just by believing or reading, memorizing the Gospels. That second birth that is stated in different places in a Kabbalistic and alchemistic way in the Bible is something sexual in which we have to apply our sexual energy to transmute, to extract that Salem. Salem of God, of course, is his own image. Remember that God is not physical. God is an entity which is everywhere. But that crystallizes in the sexual force, in order to generate its own image. So, right now, for instance, since we ignore the process in order to extract the image of God, in order to make that man into his own image, or that human being into his own image, we don't develop that because it is psychological. We didn't develop. We had just the physical appearance and psychological appearance of uh, that that we call uh, the animal or the beast. In different lectures we talk about that. Through evolution we inherit the psychological and physical characteristics of our parents. And uh, these are related with what we call the protoplasmic bodies. Just for to put an example to go further and to understand this uh, statement. The sperm and the ovum, when they connect, they form the first cell with 46 chromosomes, or 48, two vital or ethereal chromosomes and 46 physical. Each chromosome of the 48 has about uh, 100 or more genes. Within those genes, we have the inheritance. But this is where it's connected, the inheritance, the vibrations, psychological vibrations of our parents, in our own particular vibration, which remains, of course, connected to the protoplasmic bodies, that which is the mind and the emotion. Within that mind and that emotion is what we have, what we call the ego. When we talk about the psychological advocate, the ego, we have to understand that this is protoplasmic. It's a molecular atomic entity with which we think and we feel. And that is a mechanical thing or element that belongs to minerals, plant, animals. I mean, it's, it's in nature. It's lunar, mechanical. But when we arrive uh, at the level of intellectual animal in which we are, then the, we have the opportunity as we know, to extract that image of God, I, that icon or talent that we said in Hebrew, in order to elaborate the bodhicitta. Because the image of God is made within. And this is something that uh, has to be created first in order to walk the path of the Bodhisattva. 
And that is related with you have to be born again. As Jesus talks to Nicodemus. That birth is uh, an actual transformation that little by little you are performing as you are transmuting the sexual energy according to the rules of alchemy. Or, as the Bible talks, the mysteries of that. So, it is uh, stated, and we explain different times, that the true man, or the human being that uh, the Bible talks about, has seven bodies. The physical body, the ethereal body, the emotional body, the mental body, the body of will, the body of consciousness, and the spiritual body. But this man that we are talking here, I repeat, is psychological. Even the physical body is psychological, is soul, psyche. And this is something that we have to explain here because as we presently have three brains, the intellectual brain in our head, the emotional brain in our heart and navel, and the instinctual motor sexual brain, related with movements and instincts, sexual activity, The psychological man that we have to create has to be also related with these three aspects in order for the three primary forces of the universe to manifest through him. And uh, in order to create this, as you know already in Gnosticism, we always explain about the absorption of the Salem of God. That Salem or image of God is what in Christianity is called the Holy Spirit, in which in Kabbalah is called Jehovah Elohim, that in the book of Genesis states he created the man into his own image. Jehovah Elohim, according to Kabbalah, is the name of God, which are uh, attributed to Bina, which is understanding and comprehension. And this Bina manifests himself through Yesod, which is a sexual energy. It is uh, stated there in the book of Genesis that uh, Jehovah Elohim creates the man. But in order for that image of God or that human being to emerge within each one of us, we have to extract that image which is in the sexual matter. Because the only energy that can create is the sexual energy. And we have to comprehend that the sexual energy is, uh, uh, I mean, works in different octaves. We, all, we think that maybe the sexual energy only is related with the physical body, but it's not. Sexual energy is related with the seven bodies and beyond. Nothing can exist without that power, energy, or powerful energy of the Holy Spirit, Bina. So, as we transmute the sexual energy through sexual alchemy to Saha Maituna, The energy of the Holy Spirit is rising, as we know, and we explain in different lectures, in the spinal column. This is precisely what uh, in Sanskrit is called Kundalini. The energy of the Holy Spirit of Kundalini rises in the spinal column and uh, is creating, elaborating, the psychological man, the Soma Suchikong, the Bodhicitta, 
Of course, this process is not only sexual transmutation, implies a psychological work that is explained in many books and we explain in different lectures. That's why we explain that uh, the elaboration of the bodhicitta starts even if you are single. But if you are married, of course, is uh, accelerated because the two polarities, male, female, uh, increase the development of that bodhicitta when we are working, of course, psychologically and sexually in chastity, scientific chastity. In the process of uh, the rising or the elaboration of the psychological man within each one of us, between parentheses, remember that when we said man, we are referring to the manas, the superior mind in Sanskrit. And we are not pointing at the male sex, but the mana, the mind, that could exist in the female or male body. So, when the energy of the physical body rises from the coccyx to the brain, then the, a transformation of the psyche occurs in the person. The spirit and the psyche is united. But that psyche and that, that spirit, of course, abides in the higher dimensions. Here in the physical plane, the initiates start to elaborate in what we call the body of liberation. The body of liberation is a body, it's a physical body but doesn't belong to the three-dimensional world. The body of liberation is a body that is being formed as the chick is being formed within the egg, within the shell. But the process of elaboration of the body of liberation is psychological, physical and psychological. We explain in different lectures, in the previous lectures, about uh, the four ethers of the vital body, which is a superior part of the physical body. We explain that when the second serpent rises in the ethereal body, and then we elaborate the body of gold. This body of gold is the superior part of the body of liberation, that they integrate without confusion within the fourth dimension. So that's something that is occurring inside. You see, this is what we call the hypothesis. Being physical here in this physical world, three-dimensional world, you are being born inside but in the superior part of the physical body, which is the ethereal. So this body of liberation, which is physical, is made of flesh, but not flesh that comes from Adam. This, this Adam, that sinning Adam that is fallen, that is related with humanity. Remember that uh, this humanity falls from Eden. In other words, this humanity fell from that state. Now, with the process of alchemy, we create again. We born again, little by little. So, the body of gold is the ethereal body that is formed with the two superior ethers that were explained in different lectures, the luminous ether and the ref, uh, reflected ether. These two ethers are making that that we call the body of gold. And that body of gold integrates with the body of liberation, but needs more development, needs, of course, an emotional part. So within that body of liberation, 
evolves and is created after that body of gold that we talked, the ethereal body, that, uh, that which occultists and esoterists call the astral solar body. That astral solar body is called uh, uh, the child of gold or the golden child. That child of gold, golden child, is precisely our own particular individual Jesus Christ. Even though the body of liberation has also the same shape or the same features of uh, the rab- rabbi of Galilee, the Jesus of Nazareth. It is a body that is being formed within. But this uh, body of liberation needs also, as I said, the emotional part of it, which is superior. That was explained in the previous lecture, related with the transfiguration of the Bodhisattva. And of course, also this body of liberation needs a mind. Remember that I was telling you that we always divide it in three aspects. The mental, emotional, and physical. So when we start uh, rising the serpent of the mental body, or we are creating the mental solar body, which in theosophy is called inferior manas, then the, that mind is absorbed within that body of liberation. And that's precisely what happens when the, this uh, serpent of the mental body reaches certain vertebra or the 33 vertebrae of the mental body, then the initiate enters symbolically, initiatically, into the heavenly Jerusalem. This heavenly Jerusalem is the mental world. It's what uh, we call the Devakan. So, as you see, the psychological man is being born little by little, and his physical body is receiving the different attributes of the other bodies that is being born within, within him or within her through initiation. So it's a long process. It's not a process that the fundamentalists think. They say that they raise their, their arm aloft and say, I believe in Jesus and automatically they are being born again. This is a very serious chemical work. As Paul of Tarsus says, the first Adam is the Soma Suchikong, the body of soul or the psychological, or the psychic man that has to be born. That's the first man. But when the fundamentalists read the Bible, they think that the first man is, is all, all of us. We are not the first man. That first man in the book of Genesis is written there that was created in, until the sixth day. When you study the book of Kabbalah, Tarot, you find that the number six, beginning from the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six, counting from Malkut, Yesod, Hod, Netzah, Tiferet, Geburah. Geburah is called Budi in Sanskrit. The body of the soul, or the consciousness body. So the psychological man is being born here in the sixth day. Because it's a psychological process that we explain different, different times, but people, they uh, had difficulty to understand this. Because it's a process of alchemy, transmutation, the salem, the icon, the image of God is making that transformation in different octaves within the carcass, within the egg. We are that egg. In other words, the physical body that we have right now is symbolized like an egg within which all the elements are placed. And we have to work with it in order for the chick 
or we will say in order to for horrors to be born within that heavenly or we will say not heavenly here terrestrial man because when the when this image of God is created when the whole man is done is placed in Eden in the fourth dimension that's why when you investigate in, in, in Samadhi, you enter into Nirvana, you discover that all of those uh, masters or initiates within Nirvana, they have the four bodies of glory. Because we have the four bodies of sin. These four bodies of sin are the common and ordinary physical body that we have, the common and ordinary vital body that we have, which is a superior part of the physical body, the kama rupa, which is a protoplasmic emotional body that we use when we go to bed and travel in the astral plane, and the inferior manas, which is also protoplasmic mind that we use. So the mind, the emotion, the vital body and the physical body is which is called in esotericism the far bodies of sin within which unfortunately the Buddha we always explain the essence that with which we can elaborate the bodhicitta is bottled up because those protoplasmic bodies evolve from the mineral kingdom into the plant kingdom into the animal kingdom and reach the summit of the intellectual animal kingdom in which we are. But if we do not elaborate with the image of God, the psychological man, those mechanical protoplasmic bodies devolve, return into the matter, disintegrate. And their devolution, especially what the Bible called the second death, that devolution of the four bodies of sin creates or degenerates the protoplasmic body into what we call the three demons or entities that work according to devolution and that attract, of course, the laws of Klippoff. When we are, of course, working in this transformation of the second birth, or the, to be born again, of course, we work, as you know, with our protoplasmic bodies too, because we have that. But uh, we are making, as we explain here, a hypostasis. Something is being created behind of the carcass that we see from the shell. But it is a long process. Uh, this second birth that we're talking about. And uh, it says the first man is of the earth. This is what Paul says. The first man is of the earth. In other words, is matter. Because when we talk about matter, we don't only, only talk about the physical matter. There are different types of matters. Matter itself is mental. But of course, uh, we have a mind which is lunar. The matter that we are talking about here is solar, immortal. Because the solar electronic bodies are not submitted to devolution or to death. Even the body of liberation, which is the physical body that we create inside, uh, is submitted to the superior laws. It's electronic. It's edenic. It's made of flesh, like the flesh that we have here, but it doesn't belong. But it can materialize. If the master wants to appear into the physical world, Physically speaking, he or she utilizes the body of liberation in order to appear. 
Of course, during that transitional transformation, the master utilizes two bodies. The body of sin that we have, which is this, that is born by fornication, and the other bodies that is being born by transformation. The only thing that we have to comprehend and understand here is that when we talk about the initiate, when we talk about the master that have these glorious bodies, they have nothing to do with the physical personality here in this physical world. Here in this physical world, we have a name given by our parents. We use a surname according to our family. But that is uh, perishable. It has nothing to do with what we're talking here. It doesn't mean that the terrestrial or, the, or this sinful man that appears in the three-dimensional world is going to use the body of liberation. Because the body of liberation that uh, is shown uh, in the triumphal entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem, that's precisely the symbol. He is utilizing that body of liberation in order to enter into the heavenly Jerusalem. With this physical body of liberation, within which is the astral solar body, and the mental solar body, and even the will, the initial can enter in the superior worlds. Appearing in the three-dimensional world, and appearing to the astral world, the causal world, and go even into the absolute. We are talking here about the master, the initiate. Now, let us talk about us, which we are the sinful man. We are the black dragon with seven heads, lust, greed, gluttony, laziness, pride, etc. Can that dragon of seven heads utilize these glorious bodies or the body of liberation? No. And this is precisely the path of the Bodhisattva in which we have to work very hard in order to utilize that body of liberation. But the body of liberation can be used only by the Bodhicitta. Cannot, uh, the body of liberation cannot be used, for instance, by, by greed or by pride or by envy. This is a body that really belongs to the master. In all these great uh, bodies of the second birth, as I said, are utilized by... Uh, by the initiate, by the master. But that initiate, that master, we always refer in the tree of life as Hesed. That's the real man, Hesed, the seventh spirit. The problem the province in understanding this lies in that we always think physically that we are the first, but in reality we are the last. Because the first is Hesed, the spirit. And the last body is the physical body that we have. In this aspect, is how we have to understand that when we said that we use the body of liberation, we are talking about Hesed. He's the one that is using it. Which is our spirit. But now... In the hypothesis, the Bodhisattva has to unite with the Bodhicitta in order for the Bodhicitta to enjoy the body of liberation. And that is precisely a great transformation. Let me read for you what the book of Genesis says in order to, for you to comprehend better about the Soma Suchikon. 
or the psychological man that we explained already. Thou the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them, is what Genesis says. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all of his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all of his work which God created and made. So, after that, it's explained that when this man is created, there, were, there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And Yod Havai Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. When you find the word ground or earth in Genesis, it is literally Adama, the ground. Alchemically, Kabbalistically speaking, you have to understand that this physical body should be called Adama. Sometimes it's called Adam. But really is Adama, the ground, the material aspect within which we take all the elements in order to elaborate this man that is written in the book of Genesis. But it says there that God made that man from the dust of the earth. Now you have to understand what is the elaboration of that Edenic man that is written there. To take from the dust the elements and then to make that Edenic man Edenic man is a psychological and long process. Behold here that this is explained after the creation of all of it. So this is psychological work. And in the seventh day is when we have to do it. Now when we tell, talk again about the seventh day, we are talking about Bina. Remember that according to the seven planets, the, seven, the, the law of the Epta Parapar Shinak is called Moon, Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Those seven planets are the planets that are related with the seven days of the week. The seventh planet is, of course, Saturn, which is Saturday, which is this day in which we are giving this lecture, Saturday. Saturday, as you know, by Kabbalists, is holy. He says, you shall keep the Sabbath. That's a commandment in this statement very clear for those that achieve the second birth. Once you have created all of those elements within you, the psychological bodies, then you have to clean those bodies. You have to eliminate from your nature all of that, which is a uh, Negative, which is animal, which is bestial. All that that belongs to the protoplasmic bodies. And that's precisely the process that is explained in the Bible. It is written there that the Son of Man is the Lord of Sabbath. And that the Bodhisattva, who is really the Son of Man, performed his works in Saturday. This is how it is written in the Gospels. But we have to explain and to understand that in order to, to, to go deep into this work, psychological work that we are explaining here. The path of the Bodhisattva, the theme says that the Son of Man comes from the East and to the West. Alchemically, psychological, Kabbalistically speaking, you know that the Thalib, the image of God, is within the solar sexual energy. 
And that when that energy rises in the spinal column, that's the east. So the beginning of the coming of the Son of Man is a rising, the sunrise, the solar force rising the spinal column. That's the Kundalini. That's the beginning. But it has to go even into the west. What is the west? Well, you know, when you look at the west, is when the sun sets, disappears. So, with the Gnostics, we know how to follow that sun. When the sun sets in the west, you are in darkness. But a real Gnostic goes beyond and follows that sun and finds what we call the astral sun. That astral sun is precisely the cosmic Christ that shines in the west. That's why in other Gnostic scriptures, they said, do not expect anything from the east, but from the west. That meaning that in the west, in the internal worlds, when that sun disappears and shines there in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh dimension, is where the self-realized masters are. They perform all the psychological work. So the sun sets there, but it's shining in the internal world. So we, go, we have to go further. In other words, in the beginning, you start performing your psychological, alchemical work in the East. Because we are just aware of this physical world. People come here and listen about the fourth dimension, fifth dimension, sixth, seventh dimension, and they just have to imagine that. But the only dimension that we are aware that we can touch is a three dimensional world, this physical dimension. And that's the beginning. When the sun rises there, here, with this alchemical and psychological work that we have to perform. And little by little, through chastity, meditation, and all the work that we already know, the sun is rising and rising. And then the, when we achieve the second birth, which is the creation of the four bodies of glory, which belong to different dimensions, that dimensions that are called the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is above Malkut. If you have the tree of life, Kabbalah, you find the kingdom of heaven above. To be a newborn or a twice born is to be able to penetrate in all the sephiroth of the tree of life. Of course, with the consciousness, with the Burata, you can experience that. There are many practices. But uh, to be a citizen of those dimensions, you need to create the four bodies of glory. We need, you need to create the earthly man, the Edenic man, the Soma Suchikong. And with the help of the Son of Man, as we are spending here, we enter into the West when the sun sets. Because when you, the, when the sun sets, you go into the bed. You go to rest. But you continue working in other dimensions. Your physical body is resting, but you are in the west. Beyond that sunset, working psychologically, with the help of the Son of Man, in order to extract from the dust of the earth the truth. The truth. That truth is within the protoplasmic bodies, bottled up, is the burata, is the essence. Because the truth is beyond good and evil. And we have our own good and evil here in Klippoth. You see, within the protoplasmic bodies, within all of that ego, is from, from where the truth emerges from Klippoth. 
But nothing emerges like the beast. You know? Emerges when you disintegrate through Buddhist annihilation. Your psychological aggregates that cannot couple, cannot unite to the body of liberation. Because that's the problem precisely of what we call the Hanasmus. When you achieve this second birth, still you have within you the protoplasmic bodies and ego. There are some Gnostics that state that uh, you can be in danger of becoming a Hanasmus, which is a being with double polarity. But in reality, every single initiate from the past, from the present, and from the future are always in that danger. Because the second birth, you achieve it, and still you have your protoplasmic bodies, your ego. Not in the same amount that you had in the beginning, because you have to eliminate certain elements in order to achieve those heights. But when you achieve the second birth, you still have ego there in the protoplasmic bodies. And then you face the situation of remaining a Hanasmus and working little by little, eliminating or eliminating, I mean, those uh, elements to different Mahamambantaras or reincarnations. And that's what, that's what we call the spiral path. We will say that the spiral path this is the path of the Hanas Musen. Because they still have uh, ego. But the direct path is a complete elimination of all of those protoplasmic elements in order to become really a man of the seventh day. That's why when you enter into the second birth, you have two choices. The direct path, the straight path, or the spiral path. But that's just for those that had been born again. You have the choice to eliminate that bestiality that you have in different ways. In the slow way or in the fast way. The straight path is a fast, faster. And the spiral is the lowest. That's a choice. It's a choice of will. If you choose to take the direct path and then the Lord Christ incarnates in you. And this is something also that the fundamentalists do not understand. Christ does not enter into the protoplasmic bodies. In order, for, in order to receive that cosmic element within your psyche, you need to be born again. You need to have the psychological man within, the bodhicitta created, elaborated with the body of liberation, the Soma Suchikon, what uh, Paul of Tarsus speak about in Corinthians. So when that is created, and then we can talk about the Soma Neumaticon. This Soma Neumaticon, the Neuma, the spirit, is precisely the son of man that comes. Comes from above and enters in order to create to work within. And let me read for you what the Master Jesus talks about when he's talking to Nicodemus. He says, Except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven is what I will explain here. And if you are not creating this within, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And you know, he says, uh, what is flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is the spirit. And all that which is written in the, in the Bible that we repeat many times, and has written in many books about the second birth. But this is something very important here, that after that explanation that the Master Jesus is doing to Nicodemus, 
He says, And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that comes down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So in other words, here in this earth, nobody can go up to heaven if after being born again and creating all of these bodies, doesn't receive the Son of Man. In other words, we're talking here about us, which are in these uh, protoplasmic elements that we call lust, anger, pride, greed, envy, gluttony, laziness, and all of those psychological words that we have in abundance. If we want to enter, because unfortunately we are trapped within these elements, but all of us want to go into heaven. Well, even if we created the internal bodies, those elements cannot go up to heaven. But only the Son of Man, who is in heaven, I mean, has to descend as a savior into, the, into that man in order to do that. That's why he says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Remember that here, when Jesus is explaining to Nicodemus that he has to be born again, he says, after that, after you are being born again, you have to lift the Son of Man within you. That lifted up of the Son of Man is a process also of alchemy, a process of transformation in which we have to assimilate the Lord little by little. Is how we are explaining about what we call the Venustic initiations. And after that he says, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In other words, we have to work with it psychologically in all our bodies. Beginning with the body of liberation, astral solar body, mental solar body, causal solar body, and all the bodies that we created as being born again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know. So the Son of God is the cosmic Christ. And if you assimilate him, of course, you will enter into those kingdoms of the tree of life, as you, you, the consciousness that is listening right now. I repeat again in order to explain. Because the inner being, the monad, is the one that has those solar bodies and even the body of liberation. And we created that with the work that we do here. But if we want to share that, we want to enjoy that beautiful thing that our spirit is enjoying, then we have to follow the path of the Son of Man, the path of the Bodhisattva. To incarnate that cosmic element which the Bible calls the Son of God, which is, of course, Chokmah, which is a process of, of transformation. And by doing that, we acquire everlasting life. That is achieved, of course, about uh, uh, with uh, what we call the resurrection. But let us not go into that because we are explaining only about the mind. Little by little, you in different steps, you will want to comprehend all this. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But that world, of course, that we are talking here, is the Soma Suchikon, the psychological man that is created, that is elaborated. It's not somebody that believes in what is written in the, in the Bible. Of course, you, you can accept what is written there is beautiful. But in order to elaborate that, you have to reach that level and to receive the Son of God in order to achieve that. And after that,
It says that for every one that doeth evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So as you see, when Gnostically speaking, we are talking about this psychological process, alchemical process. It's a process of working with a sexual force. Because as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, also the son of man be, have to be lifted up. But you have to investigate what is that serpent that Moses lift, lifted in the wilderness. First, it's symbolic. Many times we explain that that serpent is the bronze serpent, which is the union of two metals, tin and bronze, which is masculine, tin, and bronze, which is feminine. The union of those two metals, alchemically speaking, made the serpent of bronze, which was with, with uh, Moses' work in the wilderness. So, to receive the Son of Man is to work alchemically as Moses did in the wilderness. So here we are indeed clarifying uh, the esoteric, psychological, cabalistic aspects of this process of transformation that occurs in the path of the Bodhisattva. By the development of this psychological man and by extracting from the dust of the earth the psychological elements that we need in order to enjoy the body of liberation, we are, of course, little by little gaining access to the body of liberation. Because this is precisely what God wants to give to his son. Which is unfortunately bottled up into sin. Into the four bodies of sin. Our own particular individual monad want us to enjoy the Edenic body of liberation. But if we remain with the defects vices in this physical world. And we are lazy and we do not annihilate those elements, we will never enjoy the body of liberation. We will never achieve that triumphant entrance into the heavenly Jerusalem. You see? Because there are two Jerusalems. The heavenly and the terrestrial Jerusalem. And that brings into my mind something that I was precisely reading about the two women which are the symbol of the two Jerusalems, in relation with Kabbalah. Paul of Tarsus states that the two wives of Abraham, Judah, Abraham means the father of the height. That's the meaning of that. Abraham. Or Abraham. Abba. Raham. From Semitic uh, roots. That is, of course, the monad that through Yesod has two generations or two children. You know, Abraham had Ishmael and Isaac, only two. And of course, he had Ishmael through Agar, which is Egypt, symbol of Malkut. Of the physical world. But he had Isaac through uh, Sarah or Sarai. Sarah is the, the, the wife, which is the one that received the promise of God. In other words, the image of God. So, in other words, this is a process, two covenants, in which God creates through the same way through the same vehicle which is your thought the sexual organs 
The first is precisely the ones that are being drawn from Agar. He said the, si- the Mount of Sinai is, uh, is in Egypt, which is Malkut. And all of us are children of that. But we have the opportunity to become children of Isaac, or the promise, by transmuting the Salem, the icon, the image of God within. And that's how this is the, the, the difference between the, the, the two generations. The physical generation, which is fornication, that everybody is being born through that, and the other is initiatic. It doesn't mean that, uh, that you belong to this religion or to that religion. You are going to go and to become a, a child of Isaac, or a child of Abraham that way. No, it's a transmutation that you have to perform. That's why when in the Bible you read that promise, you find that there is a pact that is a circumcision, which is a sexual symbol, in order to explain that in a hidden way. So anyhow, these two generations elaborate two different reasonings. And this is something that you have to comprehend and understand very well now. Because we reason. But we have subjective reasoning. What is subjective? Subjective is that that is below, sub. And what we find below, according to the tree of life, Kabbalah, is Malkut. This body, physical body, which is Malkut, receives impressions through the ears, eyes, nose, mouth, touch, five senses. And through this information, that we receive to the five senses of the physical body, we elaborate concepts. We reason. But that is subjective reasoning. And that subjective reasoning belongs to the protoplasmic mind that everybody has. You find that that the present Civilization is made up based on that subjective reasoning. The three dimensional world. With the five senses, we only can capture length, width, and height. There are three dimensions. Beyond that, there are many inventions that can perform and see the four dimensions, like the Kulian camera. But uh, with the five senses, we cannot go beyond. That's why when we talk about the four, the fifth, and all the dimensions related with the tree of life, we have to use too many uh, symbols. <coughs> in order for you to understand with your subjective reasoning. This science, present science, is subjective science. Related with subjective reasoning. Yeah, when I say this science, I'm talking about the materialistic science, not this science of Gnosticism. This science of Gnosticism is objective reasoning. In other words, when we start working in the psychological work that we're explaining here, we develop objective reasoning. And with objective, we refer to the superior parts of the tree of life, the seventh, sixth, fifth, fourth dimension, within which we find other elements. But in order to penetrate there, we need to develop other senses. And those senses are precisely related with the psychological man that we are developing. Because as this man here in this physical world, see with his eyes, hear with his ears, smell with his nose, and etc. The psychological man also has senses. He not only utilizes the five senses, but even more. He utilizes seven senses more. Which in esotericism or occultism is being talked a lot. About the seven chakras. 
But of course, the seven chakras or the seven churches that the book of Revelation talks about have to develop by annihilating the psychological bestial elements that are within. Because that burata, that essence, can enjoy those powers even before creating the bodies of glory or the psychological men within by eliminating the egos or by pronouncing mantras. But in the psychological men, all those senses are completely awakened by the extraction of the psyche which is bottled up into the protoplasmic matter which is subjected to evolution and devolution in this mechanical world. It is uh, uh, important to emphasize the psychological man is not submitted to evolution, neither to devolution. It's out of those laws. Belongs to other laws. But he is capable of penetrating into the higher sephirah of the tree of life. The fourth dimension, the fifth dimension, the sixth and seventh, where we find all of those because each dimension is multidimensional. It's multiplied. So you penetrate there with your psychological senses. And then, based on those psychological senses, which people call clairvoyance, clairaudience, telepathy, intuition, which are developed in 100%, the psychological man, the bodhicitta, develops objective reasoning. And that's why it is precisely very difficult to bring information, wisdom, knowledge, gnosis, from your, I mean, utilizing your objective reasoning and to explaining into people that have only subjective reasoning. It is natural that the subjective reasoning people are skeptical. And some of them only believe. So, talking about this topic of this objective reasoning, when Jesus is entering into the heavenly Jerusalem, or as, as, as it is written in the Gospels, when he is entering into Jerusalem and is received with palms, branches, and telling unto him, Hosanna, Hosanna, to the Son of God. Right? The one that comes in the name of or the Son of David. And enters into Jerusalem. Of course, that is a symbol of the initiate. Penetrating into the superior worlds, consciously. With a body of liberation. In other words, the Son of God, Christ is integrated with the bodhicitta perfectly. That is what it calls hypostasis. And that son of God, that bodhisattva, is riding into a donkey and pulling a colt. You read the Bible, you will find. Now let us fear the, the symbol of this. That is a symbol, of course, of uh, the subjective reasoning that we have here. By observing the protoplasmic bodies of the subjective reasoning, we discover that there are two types or two levels of people related with this subjective reasoning. The first ones are called the intellectuals. That reason a lot and utilize that mind. And the other ones are called the believers. They utilize that mind, protoplasmic, but based not in what the five senses inform them, but just in dogmas, beliefs, something that they read, but they cannot prove, because they don't have internal bodies. 
they don't have access to objective reasoning. These two type of people are called in the Bible the ones related with the emotional center, Pharisees. And the others which are only related with the intellectual center, they are called Sadducees. Master Jesus, when entering into Jerusalem, he says, take heed of the leaven, the gist of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Of course, when you read this, what is the gist of the leaven? Is that the element that uh, the people that bake bread uh, utilize in order to make the bread uh, huge? They use the gist in order to inflate the bread, right? Remember that the bread, lehem in Hebrew, is a symbol of wisdom. That's why when you said that uh, Jesus of Nazareth, of the Christ, was born in Bethlehem, is a house of bread, the, the, the house of wisdom. So, the Pharisees and Sadducees, since they don't understand, they do not comprehend the scriptures, they cannot penetrate into the superior worlds in order to analyze what is what this scripture says in relation with the initiatic path. They only read the scriptures literally. And obviously, according to their beliefs, according to their, their habits, customs, traditions, they interpret what is written according to their minds. In other words, they put different leaven, different yeast, and make different breads. That's why, especially, you find in the world, in the mental world, different sects. With one verse of the Gospels, you can make a new sect. When you study Christianity, you find many sects of Christianity. And they utilize the same book, but they contradict themselves. And they follow a different directions. The same with Buddhism. Different sects of Buddhism. Different sects of Judaism. And everyone interprets and fights among themselves. And of course, if the sects of Christianity fight among themselves, the sects of Buddhism fights among themselves, and Judaism among themselves, and Hinduism among themselves, obviously their followers fight among religions too. That's why we have, or we are living in what we call a confusion of tongues. The confusion of tongues belongs only to subjective reasoning, to those that are incapable of penetrating into the internal world. And they fight. Each one, according to their beliefs and feelings, put leaven and make different bread. And they offer it to you. Says, this is the bread of wisdom. Eat it. But of course, it is written that we have to eat unleavened bread. That unleavened bread comes to you only when you awake your senses. A pure bread of wisdom from God. That is called Kabbalah, Kabel, to receive that pure wisdom. But if you talk with any intellectual Sadducee that read the Bible literally, that does not put his heart there, he just contradicts you, he becomes skeptical. Can be an atheist. And to tell you that all that is written in the Bible is just Bawani. People that don't know what to write and this contradicts with this, contradicts with that. It's, it's, it's just, it's the same, any, any sacred book is like that. An invention of the people that in ancient times were stupid, superstitious. And they were creating uh, new beliefs. That they believed that the sun was a god. And that then they're making uh, symbols of God in different, with different faces, etc., etc. They explain that if you want to know more about, watch uh, National Enquirer on TV. And they, with a luxury detail, they explain things. 
And I say, yeah, that's a subjective reasoning. Anybody can talk about that and laugh about it. Right. What can you do? Sadducees that ignore completely about the superior truths, about the superior signs. Of course, this, in that time, this science is developed. It's subjective science based on the five senses. And that's why the Bodhisattva is always warning to his followers. They heed of that leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Because uh, they make a mess of the doctrine and confuse people. But you have this, what we always we emphasize. Follow your own being. Awake your senses. Receive the true bread of wisdom through meditation. Without any type of gist. Because most of the gist that uh, we find is related with traditions. With rules which are established. Very strong. And if you don't follow these rules, you are bad. You go on to hell or whatever, etc., etc., etc. Right? So, the Bodhisattva, instead of uh, identifying himself or herself with those two minds, Pharisees and Sadducees, believers and skepticals, what he does is utilize his mind. He controls his mind. He works. That's why when Jesus is going to enter into Jerusalem, into the world of the mind, which is the world of Buddha, because in order to be illuminated, you have to control completely your mind. Not only the solar mind, but also those donkeys. The donkey and the cult that is written in the, in the Gospels. Let me read the what the gospel says about this. It says, And when they drew nine unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bathphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you will find an ass tied with a colt. Bring them to me. You see? An ass and a colt. You can apply the ass to the Sadducees and the call to the Pharisees. It doesn't matter. But both are stubborn animals. Bring them to me. In other words, it says, you have to bring, if you are a disciple of the Lord, if you are walking in the path of the Bodhisattva, you have to bring those bestial animals to your Lord. It says, utilize the Lord. Here we have my... Mind, which is called the sensual mind, that nourishes itself with the five senses. And here is my intermediate mind, that nourishes itself with beliefs. I have too many information. I read the Bible. I read the Bhagavad Gita. I read the Koran. I read the scriptures of Buddha. I have a lot of information in my mind, and I believe in it. But please, utilize that information and tell me what does it mean? I want to enter into the heavenly Jerusalem, not as a believer, but somebody that understands what is written, that comprehends the wisdom. And that's why his disciples, which are the Bodhisattvas, bring that to the Son of Man, that cosmic Christ. And he sits in the body of liberation. Because that body of liberation is related, which is physical, I, I, I told you. With the astral body, which is related with emotions, which is counterpart, is the Pharisees. We have to annihilate the interior Pharisee. You see the word Pharisee? Come from the, from Persi, from Persia. In Persia, there is the worshippers of Zoroaster, the Zoroastrians, that worship the fire. God is fire, it says. So if you are a Persian, Zoroastrian, you worship the fire. You are a Persian, a Persi, a Pharisee. So anyone that worships God, 
within as a fire is a Pharisee, is a is a Persia, a Pharisee. But it's not enough to worship God in that way. It's, it's, it is important. It is necessary to understand that and to develop that within. Because just to remain as believer is wrong. We have to elaborate that. And that's precisely one of the asses. That's why in Gnosticism we said that there is a process in which we make conscious what we believe. This is a process with the psyche, with the consciousness. Do you believe in something? Okay, meditate in that and discover that within you and with the universe. Make know thyself. Because everything that is written in different books is wisdom. But you have to discover that. If you don't discover that within you, you won't discover that outside. And of course, we have a lot of Phariseeism within. Especially when we read a lot of esoteric books and we believe in them. It's good. That's the beginning, to believe. But you have to go beyond. And of course, we have the other cult or S, or donkey, which is precisely the intellectual. That mind that only believes of what he can uh, uh, capture to the uh, five senses, the sensual mind. The Lord has to control those two minds, the Pharisee and the Sadducee, and to transform them, to make them completely a liberated body, in other words, we have to reach the level in which we have to prove, we have to experience all of that that we read, all of that that we believe inside. And only to enter into the heavenly Jerusalem. And then the initiates will say, Osana, Osana in the highest. Yeah, Osana in the highest, the superior dimensions. Because there you are entering like a Buddha. So you understand what is, is that? To be a Buddha? But that's why in Netzah, in this level in which we are talking here, Netzah is the level in which you receive the title of Buddha. In the fourth initiation, where you create a solar mind, your inner being receives the title of Buddha. But to become an illuminated Buddha in all the tree of life, that's a, a hard work. And that's precisely the symbol of Jesus entering into Jerusalem. This is what he was teaching. When you read all the Gospels and all the verses and chapters before that and ahead, this is what he was teaching. You have to do the same thing. You have to enter into the heavenly Jerusalem but for that you have, of course, to receive the help of the Neumaticon, which is the Son of God, that comes after the Soma Suchikon, the psychic body. It's not that the Soma, or the, the Soma Neumaticon will come right now. It's like the, the fundamentalists think. Raise your arm aloft and believe in Jesus and the Neumaticon, that superior heavenly man, the son of man, will enter into you. Meanwhile, you don't have any psychological man within you. You just have the protoplasmic bodies. You have only the ass and the cult. How are you going to receive the Neumaticon like that? Or that is spiritual body? That's the process of being born again, in, alchemically speaking. First one thing, what is natural is what Paul says, and then the spiritual. Unfortunately, the Bible is translated in many ways, and then translate Soma Suchikon as natural body. And the real translation is psychic body. So first is the psychic body, the Soma Suchikon, then is the Neumaticon, the son of man. It's a process of development that it starts now when working within you. It's not by following a, a sect or a belief that you're going to perform that. You need to work with your three brains. 
Your emotional brain, your mental brain, and your sexual motor instinctual brain. Individually speaking, a single, you can do it. But after a certain level, you have to go and have to share the three brains in the couple. Because in order to create the internal, the body of liberation, the astral body, the mental body, the causal body, etc., you need the cooperation of the two polarities. Adam and Eve. By a single, nobody is being born again. But you can advance in the development of the bodhicitta that will prepare you to go ahead. That's precisely what was happening in the past. The College of Initiates were demanding from the neophytes to awake, to annihilate defects, vices, in order to enter into the path with a great percentage of bodhicitta. But now we are delivering the knowledge, as you know, nobody has a bodhicitta, but we are in the times of the end, and we have to accelerate and to work with this. That's why the knowledge, the path is explained, in order for you to understand that it's not a matter of believing or reading books. It's a matter of working yourself. And uh, right now, of course, many couples, many Gnostics start, uh, even they are married, working with the alchemy. Meanwhile, the bodhicitta is not yet developed. But we have to do it because we are, as you know, in the time of the end. But you have to develop the bodhicitta. And that is by annihilating all of those elements that we have within, which are psychological, which are negative, which are animalistic, in order to uh, triumphantly enter in into the heavenly Jerusalem. And that's precisely what we said, the hypostasis of the Bodhisattva, the Christ, up there with the Bodhicitta, with the psychological work that we are doing here. It's not, as you said, a matter of, of, of believing. Or, that's why when the Pharisees and Sadducees go to John the Baptist in the Gospel of John, which is the Gospel related with Netzah, the eagle. He says, who are you? Are you the Christ? He is asking directly to the Bodhicitta. The Bodhicitta, as you know, it's a body of liberation with that. He says, no, I am not the Christ. Bodhisattva is up there, the son of man. Are you Elias or Elijah? The Eliao, Elios, the solar logos? No. But his bodies were created with that energy. I am not Elias, Elijah or Eliao. Are you the prophet? The prophet is Hesed, the spirit. But the Bodhicitta here, which are related with these four, four bodies of glory, he says, no, I am not the prophet. And then the Pharisees and Sadducees are confused. He says, well, why are you then preaching and baptizing if you are not Christ, if you are not the Messiah, neither the prophet, neither Elias? Who are you? Tell us. In order to go back and tell to the ones that sent us to ask you, who are you? And then uh, John the Baptist says, well, you see, identifying himself with the mind, the terrestrial man. I says, I am just the voice of one who preached in the wilderness. Right? He says, one bodhicitta, I mean, that's the bodhicitta, you see. The bodhicitta is elaborating, taking the truth from his good and evil, from his different vices, and he's elaborating with the assistance of the Lord. And he says, who are you? And he says, well, I am the Borchita. I am the one, the voice. The small Yao. Because the higher Yao is up there. The small Yao is the son, I mean the, the man, the terrestrial man. One voice that preached in the wilderness. As the prophet Isaiah wrote about. But I'm telling you, he says, in the middle of you is one that is bigger than, my, than I, that I am not worthy of on Lucy's shoes. And now, of course, is, is the Lord, is Christ within you, that you can 
work in order to become uh, a bodhisattva. And that's why John the Baptist says, I have to diminish and he has to grow up. But that is within you. When you understand that you are working, the Lord is growing up within you and the terrestrial man is diminishing because the Lord, the Bodhisattva, the Son of Man, utilizes the Bodhicitta in order to explain. And the one that has to resurrect from the dead is the Bodhicitta. But that union is a mixture that is... uh, Explained in many ways in, by the ancient Gnostics. The hypostasis. Or the heavenly with the human. With the divine and human. That's the son of man. Do you have questions? The seven bodies. About the seven bodies. The seven bodies are those bodies that make the true man. According to the tree of life, those seven bodies are the spirit, Hesed, the consciousness, Gebura, the willpower, Tifereth, the mind, Netza, the emotion, Hod, which is also called astral body, then the ethereal body, which is called Yesod, and the physical body, which is Malkut. Those are the seven bodies of the true man. So in order to be a true man, you have to have those seven bodies created within. And you said something about understanding uh, each level of those seven bodies. So every, every one of those bodies understands differently? Or well, every, each body belongs to a different dimension. Right. But uh, the consciousness, your consciousness, is within each one of them. That's why it is, the whole thing receives the, the name of Soma Suchi Kong, right? This is the, the whole psychological man created within. Within that Soma Suchi Kong, which in, in reality is the body of liberation, which is physical, but belongs to the fourth dimension, to Eden. Within that is the body of gold, which is the two superior ethers. There is the luminous, and reflect the ether within. That make a, another man immortal. And within that is the superior emotion. And the superior intellect. Which elaborates the objective reasoning. You said one of those was the, the witness, the soul. I mean, one of those... One of those bodies, the Soba Suchikong. Soma is body in Greek. Suchikong means uh, image body. What is the fifth one's name? Tifreth. No, the other one up. Uh, Hesed. Hesed. That's the spirit. Hesed in Kabbalah. Do you are familiar with the tree of life? Very vaguely. Very vaguely. Well, here you can have... Uh, schedule of this tree of life and to start studying because when you study Christianity which is rooted in Judaism and Judaism is rooted in the tree of life which is Kabbalah everything in the Bible is Kabbalistic and in order to understand it you have to know the tree of life which is written in the book of Genesis just mentioned the tree of life but people don't understand what is that it's all of those different elements and parts of the being within you and within the universe. Do you ever hear that says the man is the microcosmos or the macrocosm? Well, that is. right, Because with the tree of life, you can uh, picture the macro, the big, in different ways. How do we study it? But that is reflected within you. To be reflected, to have the image. Another question? Yeah, the physical body was get old and died. But that uh, body of liberation is not subjected to death. 
or to devolution. But of course, remember that within the physical body that we have, we have uh, the karmic inheritance. We have the karma duro, the karma zaya, and all that that we call karma that we have to pay. That's why when you enter into the path of the bodhisattva, the bodhisattva, the superior being, along with the bodhicitta, acts through the same carcass, which is the physical body that we have. Because that body is the way in which he has to pay what he owes. You know, because we have a lot of karma. And, and you cannot be liberated completely until you pay what you owe. And that's precisely the, the work of, of, of Christ as a savior. He comes entering into you in order to negotiate all of those forces with nature and with the cosmos. In order to liberate you from that, those uh, things that you created, which is karma, in the past. Because all of us, unfortunately, are entangled in that uh, cosmic karma. And uh, the initiate also works through that carcass and teach. And that's precisely one of the points that many people do not understand. When we were talk about the Master Samael on the or in Mexico, he was a bodhisattva in the process and he was elaborating the bodhicitta. But when you go out or when you went to Mexico and to meet him, you were seeing the carcass. The physical carcass that was born uh, like any one of us. If you don't develop clairvoyance or uh, different senses, you cannot see inside of him. But if you have the opportunity to see the inner being, the inner man, that is different. Then you understand that one thing is that initiate called bodhisattva and bodhicitta. And another thing is the carcass. The physical matter that you see there that is uh, a common and ordinary citizen that needs to go to the market and to buy food and order to cook, needs to shower, needs to do the chores, whatever, and order to survive in this jungle of cement and iron that we call cities. And that's precisely that you have to understand. That's what we always state, that we had to face two parts of a big equation. The first is to survive in this jungle in which we are, this civilization. Second is what we are teaching here. It's the other half of the equation that people ignore. Do you have another question? In the previous lecture, you identified um, Elijah and Yamada mm -hmm. as both representing uh, Bodhicitta. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you are facing physically the person, that is, of course, the vehicle of the bodhisattva. That vehicle is the bodhicitta, which has the body of liberation, the astral solar body, and the mental body. And he utilizes that solar mind in order to communicate the wisdom to you. So if you ask that person, who are you? Well, I am the mind here teaching this, but are you Christ? No. You know, is it, the mind is only a vehicle. Are you Elias? No, the mind is only a vehicle. Are you a prophet? No, is, the mind is only a vehicle. The true prophet is the spirit. Okay? That's why there's a problem of many uh, initiates that identify with the mind and they start boasting around. I am the master this, I am the master that. And then the protoplasmic mind, you see, the demon of the mind is taken over and he is being a slave of his own particular individual, Satan. Right? He's glorifying himself. Meanwhile, God is one thing and you are another thing. This is what you have to understand. Now, when the resurrection happens, that's another thing. There's the union completely of the two forces. Before that, you have to be careful of what you say, when you speak. Right. It is precisely the beginning of, of the Gospel of John. Who are you? And he says, I am just a voice of somebody that preaches in the wilderness. 
And anybody is just the voice. The voice, the verb, the, the word, the mind. Right? That's it. Do you have another question? Is another question there in the... No? Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, next Saturday, we are going to go up, further up, into the tree of life. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,